Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? Sean Evans checking in, and in case you missed it, Kevin Durant hosted a live event at YouTube Space in LA last week where he made the rounds with YouTubers like Ryan Toys Review and What's Inside. Regrettably, I'm sure, he also chose to invite Hot Ones. The setup's a little bit different this time around, and since Kevin didn't get to do a plug, I'm gonna do it for him now. Check out Kevin Durant on YouTube. Lots of cool BTS stuff, plus he's doing it his own way, and we respect the hell out of that around these parts. Well, without further ado, Here's Kevin Durant versus the Wings of Death. All right, KD, nice to meet you, my man. What's up, brother? So we're here at YouTube Space in LA. You've gone through what's inside. You've gone through Ryan's toy review. But now we're really cranking up the heat here with the Wings of Smell Death. It, yeah. How are you with hot food? Are you a spicy food guy? You just say that, yeah, I am. Well, we'll find out if you are, really, right? right? And to the Hot Ones fans, man needs no introduction. MVP, eight-time All-Star, NBA champion. But can he handle Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage? We'll find out today, Kevin. You ready to get going? Yes, sir. Before we start, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but Kevin Love came in here and he cleared the board, got on top of the wings. No added pressure, just want to just want to put that out there. Just want to put that in your head. That was good. I like You're into that. it. You like it. Yeah. So there are a lot of milestones to chase when you're an NBA player. The trophies, the banners, oh, yeah. the rings. But I think the most underrated thing is the hip hop shout out. Oh yeah, yeah. When you think about all the times that you've been name checked in rap lyrics, which one's your favorite? Wow, that's a um, great question. J. Cole shouted me out in his last album, which went double platinum. That was pretty cool. Drake did on his last album. Bustin' Road Flows. Yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends love that one, so. Yeah, you listen to these guys and they throw your name out there, it makes you feel pretty established. I'm a huge hip hop fan, man, and that's always been a part of the culture to me. So much so, in fact, don't you have a uh, studio in your basement? I heard you have a studio in your basement. I do, actually. I enjoy making music, just like, um, see basketball courts in a lot of these guys' homes. I enjoy uh -huh. making music, so I built a studio in mine, and it's been fun, man, so much fun. Well, I can't wait for the mixtape. Are you ready to move on? <laughs> yeah. We all know that one. So yesterday, you went to your YouTube community tab and you asked for questions for your Hot Ones appearance. So this one is all about the fans. The first one's from at Bogar. What's been the best thing so far about your off season? Oh, the best thing is just knowing that you're a champion, knowing what it takes to get there. Um, so just try to follow that same blueprint year in and year out. If you could play with any NBA player in history, who would it be and why? It'd probably have to be Will Chamberlain. Oh, I'll go Magic Johnson. Tween to get you the two. ball. Yeah, Magic, he was next level. So yeah, I'm a huge Magic fan. All right, so this next one is from Kevin Julius. Who was your celebrity crush growing up and who is it now? Man, uh... You had a lot of them. Yeah, I Big did. list. Yeah, uh, Beyonce was really a... Beyonce was... During one, your formative years, yeah, a real When I was influence. a teenager, now it's... <laughs> no, not now. Um, but now, I don't even know, bro to be honest. You might really. want to take advantage of the platform. You know what you, I mean? That's you exactly throw what a I name thought. Out. Yeah, but let me look at my phone or something first. Man, I got so many that I love, but it's it's just all, I'm just, you put me on too much under the spotlight, man. I have too much pressure on me right now, and I'm pissed that I can't get this, take advantage of this. That's moment. on you, it's a blown opportunity, KD. One Damn. more for you. Hey, KD, when you won the championship, who was the first person you called? Oh, my godfather, yeah. Called him back, he was back at home in Maryland. He taught me how to play the game. So that must have been a big moment for him. Oh yeah, for sure. We talked about this for a long time. So like many players in the NBA, I know that you're a 2K obsessive. Yeah. When you play other players in the league, who's your most formidable opponent? Who's your fiercest rival? I played against Kyrie a couple years ago at the Olympics. We had the Xbox set up and he's pretty good. Besides 2K, what game do you play the most? Uh, Rory McIlroy, PGA Tour. There I play that like seven, eight hours a day sometimes. It's amazing. Me and my friends go online and play. It's so much fun. 
And then Gordon Hayward once suggested that by playing 2K, he became a better basketball player in real life. Do you think that there's something to that or is that just crazy talk? Oh, no, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. The game is so real now. It's like watching film almost, you know? Uh, they have so many different modes on there as well. They have a GM mode that I play nonstop and I really feel like the general manager. The game is so real now, it makes it seem like you're actually really getting better, but you're probably not. Some of these bottles I haven't even seen before. All new to you. Yeah. I know that you have Tupac tattooed on your leg, Jesus on your back, but at first we feast, the tattoo that we're most interested in is Rick James. Can you talk about the decision to get Rick James permanently inked on your body? Oh yeah, Rick James brings back to a time where like I first started listening to that type of music. I remember when I was probably like eight years old and I heard Fire and Desire with Tina Marie and it just gave me a different feeling in life, you know? And uh -huh. I wanted to recreate that feeling. And uh, I spontaneously just got a tattoo on my thigh and I think I'm really be excited about it once I get older. Show my kids Rick James on my thigh, they're gonna really think I'm a cool dad, so. It's a, it's light years. That's what I think it is. A light years thing. You got you can't. You can't don't know think what in I'm the doing. time. You have to you have to be yeah, looking around the corner. You can't know what I'm doing unless you know. I had to explain it to you for you to get it. That's how big it is now. You got your own sauce. You're not the only one out here. Not the only one out here, KD. How can you ball it? So we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive in our guest's Instagram. I know that you're a little new to the e IG I'm game. I'm back on IG. Yeah, you're making your return. Two year hiatus. So what we've done is instead pulled some great throwbacks. So I'll show you the picture, and then you tell me the bigger story. What's going on, okay? All right. First one, this looks like a good time. Ooh, I was 25th birthday, and he just dropped um, Nothing Was The Same. Oh, it was lit. It was so much fun. What do you remember about that night? Nothing. <laughs> That's how you know you had a good time. Yep. From one base sports icon to another, talk to me about your relationship with Andre Ward. When I was in OKC, I, uh, <clears throat> he signed with Rock Nation as well, so we, we both kind of knew the same people, and I asked him for some signed gloves because he's my favorite boxer, and I didn't know him at the time. And then when I moved to the Bay, we just got tight and uh, came out to support him there. So happy that he won, man. It was, he's a real, real good friend of mine, and we, our relationship was growing. And then I have one more for you, KD. I don't know if this is the first time that you met Kobe Bryant. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But this is from 2007, from the USA team. Oh, yeah, was this the first time that you met Kobe? Yeah, that was the first time. I don't remember the conversation, but I can remember that I was very, very, my, I was shaking. Kobe is a god to me, uh, basketball-wise. So just to see him actually know my name at that time, I was 18, it was surreal. Did you learn anything from him? Uh, yeah, when you get every time you touch the ball, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're moving on to Dirty Dicks. Very aggressive brand name. Oh uh, yeah. Pause that. How many shows you do a week? So your stomach can't be holding up. I'm trying. You know, as an athlete, you push it to the limit, You're right? right. You're right. Sometimes as a talk show host, you have to do the same thing, especially when you're just doing these interviews over chicken wings all the time. Everybody always wants to talk about the NBA as being so cutthroat, but I'm more into the camaraderie of the situation. Yeah. So what I want to do is hit you with some things and you can tell me who in the NBA you'd go for for advice about that thing. If you needed a good wine recommendation, who would you go to for a good wine recommendation? Good wine recommendation. LeBron. LeBron knows his wine. Yeah. What about for a stock tip? I'm pretty good with that stuff. I don't need nobody for that. What if you need a little veteran advice from someone who's been in the league longer than you? Who do you go to? Nick Collison, easily. For a guest verse, would it be Damian Lillard? Yeah, yeah, it would be Dame. Yeah, he's the best rapper in the league. For style tips? One person I wouldn't go to is Draymond. So no let's help get that out the way first. <laughs> um, yeah, Westbrook, easily. That's a crazy name. They don't try to pretend they're something that they're not. You I, I want to I see if people actually buy this stuff. Mainly for pranks. Mm-hmm. It's a dorm room pranks, that's it. We didn't do this in my dorm room. Well, I was only there for a couple months. Oh. Yeah, I'm getting a little watery up here. <laughs> Be careful around your eyes. 
I don't yeah, want you to. Yeah, that's a no. They told me I can't. Um, yeah, that's pretty bad if you touch your face with this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I don't have to go with the knuckle. Veteran move. Veteran move. So when it comes to professional athlete Twitter fingers, yours are some of the most prolific. What are the things online, the shenanigans online that you find hardest to brush off, even though you know whatever you respond, millions of eyeballs are gonna see it? I just hate the basketball takes about my game. You know, that's what gets me the most. <laughs> you tell me I can't shoot or I can't post up or I can't pass or I can't rebound well or I don't defend well or I got, um, yeah, you'd say that, I go off. Your mentions right not now are just off. filling up. <laughs> yeah, that just hit me. Not go off, but I'll, I'll definitely try to make you feel stupid. I got the uh, snake comment so many times, I might just tap two one of those on my arm. That's the next thing, spin it. And then this conversation, it's actually a rather poetic segue to the next wing. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm sweating a little bit over here. I can't I can lie, see, but I can ready. see. So this one is the bomb beyond insanity. Oh, that don't even taste like anything. That's just like, what is it even, why do you even make that? I think just to help me with my YouTube clout. I know it was harvested in the walls of hell, but I've gotten a lot of mileage out of it. We got two more? I know that you're not shy about your criticisms of the media, be it ESPN's bummy news segment or what have you. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, what did the ESPNs of the world, the Bleacher Reports of the world, get wrong about KD? Well, first of all, <clears throat> they don't let me create my own content and they don't let me tell my own story. So how can they tell my story um, without even talking to me? Two, that's why I'm on YouTube. I get to tell my own story, and it's told by me, the person that actually went through it. It's hard for me to kind of respect someone who criticizes if you've never even uh, been on the stage before. So that's why I go off. Let me ask you this. If you find yourself in retirement, on the other side of the microphone, what would you do differently as a member of the sports press? Well, I'm gonna be all about the players. I'm gonna be all about the players. It's all about what they want to do. They're proud, we're the product, we're, we're pushing the league, the players are pushing the league, so it should always be about the players. Oh, sorry, I'm a little... Nowadays, it's, it's, it's like a feud between the players and the media. It's always like us versus them, it feels it's like... conflict. Yeah, it should just appreciate what you see, man. It's a, it's a beautiful art form, it's different from... We're all creators too as basketball players, it's just different. Appreciate that, stop trying to compare all the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one's Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage. It used to be our hottest sauce. It's now our second hottest sauce. Next to this. Wash it out. I'm shaking right now. Find it, Kevin. Find it, Kevin. Careful around Ooh, the eyes. What is that? <laughs> it's a tough one. It's the Liquid Rage, I think. Let's go. Here we go, Kevin. Here we go, Kevin. So no matter where you go in your NBA career, I know that you're still a DC guy at heart. Yep. Which is more DC in your opinion? Mumbo sauce or half smokes? Ooh. Tough one. Is this the tough one? <laughs> Mumbo sauce is, but half smokes though. We used to cut the half smokes up. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna go mumbo sauce though. But it's a tough decision. Oh yeah, for sure. Excluding yourself, who's the best basketball player ever to come out of the DMV? Kurt Smith. You don't know who he is, because he ain't playing the NBA, but he's the best. How Probably better than me, in my opinion. He's more of a legend in DC than I am. Street ball scene, see, that's why I started playing street ball. That's how I know basketball, through street ball, so. And then sometimes that's where you shine when it's the Drew League or it's Rucker. Or, or uh, Barry Farms or Watts. Or, that's where I grew up, so. I learned the game playing street ball, and then I started watching NBA later, so I didn't really start loving the stars until I got like teenage years, so before then it was the street ball legends that did it for me. And Kurt Smith, who I named was the best one. How do you explain go-go music to people who don't know what it is? I tried to explain that to somebody the other day and I was like, I, I look so stupid explaining it because it's like, it's such a unique sound. I don't even know how to just duplicate that, like beatbox that, <laughs> you know, so. But everybody knows what it is. It just hasn't hit mainstream, but it's, it's deep in our culture. Tabby Bonet or Wale? Both. 
Tough to pick. That's when I say when I get behind the mic, I'm gonna change it up. So I'm gonna go both. Ain't no comparing. They both they both showing the city love. So I both love them. <coughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go both. And then, what's your favorite monument? See, I grew up in Maryland, and I never really went to in D.C. I never really went to the monuments. I never visited them. That seemed like miles and miles away, so I've never been. I just ne I don't know why now. I'm thinking about so much at the one time right now. Well, I'll only give you one more sauce to think about. I can't even think right now. This is the last dab. It's a tough one. And we call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last wing. You don't have to if you don't want to, Kevin Durant, but I think it's a good time to mention that Kevin Love did. I'm a little crazy right there. Kitty going in, oh, going in. Uh, oh, let me scoop some let me, more. Let me switch with you. Let me switch. Okay. No, I got that. Smart, smart, smart. All right, Katie. Cheers. Cheers. Find it, my man. Sweating like you're at the free throw line. I love it. Seriously, like, we just make this for the show. Mm-hmm. Good job. I would mix my wings in that. That's the whole thing. We don't want to make a dorm prank sauce, KD. We wanted to make something that people would actually like. Yeah, we'll I don't have to make like four at a time, though, because you <laughs> can't have more than four, two of those. Hi, KD. You're a man who has climbed many mountains in recent years. An MVP award, yep. a finals MVP, an NBA champion, and let the record show, you just crushed 10 wings on hot ones. Nothing to sneeze at. So here, we're taking it back to the YouTube fans for this one last question, because at NZE Leaky Ted needs to know, <laughs> what would you tell someone who has big dreams and goals, but they're constantly told by others that they're not gonna be, and I'll censor him, ish? Well, get it from around those people. You need to hang around new people, because um, they'll, drag, they'll drag you down easily no matter what. And just believe in yourself, man, but you can't have belief without hard work. So you can say you want this or want that. If you're not getting up and going to work for it every day, you're just talking. So hopefully that helps. It is great life advice. It's a pro tip from Kevin Durant. And what an amazing performance. It feels like game five all over again when I look across the table. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I did not want y'all to see this. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Thank great, you so much. Great questions, you guys. If you ever have the courage to go through it again. Oh, yeah. I would recommend all my friends to come on this show. Tell stuff. Oh, you already got it out? Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell stuff to. Uh, that would be dope. Yeah. I love it. Oh. Hello world, Sean Evans coming at you to say thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. We're hovering around the 3000th ranked YouTube channel in the world. It has been a childhood dream of mine to be somewhere in the mid twos. We're so close. Help make an adult bald man's dreams come true. Please, please, please. JK, JK, no pressure. But if you do subscribe, I appreciate it.